Hello, welcome to PlayStation Access and welcome back to the Tuesday Checklist. It's been a while, hasn't it? Sorry about that. Anyway, seeing as how the amazing PlayStation Hits range launched last month, a catalogue of classic games available for just $15.99 each, we got talking about those iconic titles every PS4 owner needs in their collection. Holly's up first with an entry that will surprise nobody. So a game that I think every PS4 owner should play. Can you guess? Yakuza okay. Zero. Hey. No, 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 no. You look at like the lineups of like the, those PlayStation hits, and like out of that for me, because I'm quite late to the party. I hadn't, I sort of heard of Yakuza growing up. If like, I had seen it in like you know official PlayStation magazine, and I just assumed it was just like a bit of like mindless GTA violence. I was like, that's not for me. And I'd gone to PSX to go see Persona 5. And while I was there, someone from Sega Atlas was like, well, we've got this other game, like Yakuza Zero, do you want to check it out? I was like, no. <laughs> <laughs> you can't be rude, because obviously I had dismissed the series and I was like, I can't be an ass. I will say yes. And then, next thing I know, everyone's ripping their shirts off and it's great fun. In the game, right? Oh, well, I mean, it is Sega. <laughs> <laughs> Art, life imitating. Um, and it was so, so good. And then I've been playing games since I was like three or four years old. So if there's a series by now that I was gonna get into, I've probably discovered it, like Final Fantasy. I follow the series, so I'm always waiting for the next game. But then all of a sudden, someone's just gone, here, here are seven games in a series that you have yet to experience. How does that feel? And it was just, it's so nice to just discover something. Have you played them all now? I've, no. So I've played, this is the most popular question I probably get asked on Twitter. The order is zero, <laughs> Kiwami, Kiwami two, three, four, five, and six. So I have not played Kiwami two. two. That's what I haven't played. Right. So Kiwami and Kiwami two are remakes of one and two. Uh. Which came out on PS2. So I played Zero, then Kiwami, and then I skipped PS3, 3, 4, and 5. I will forget this info until the next Tuesday checklist when you tell me again. Yeah, basically. <laughs> but yeah, I I haven't played uh, Kiwami 2, but now someone, you know, by the time this video comes out, you'll pretty much be able to go and play Zero, 1, 2, and then you can get a PS3 out of 3, 4, and 5. I played 6. 4 on PS3 before. It was amazing. It was free on Plus, I think. I think it was even before that when it came out, I reviewed See? it for someone and I gave it a 9 out of 10 I was like, this is amazing. You reviewed it? Yeah, and then just never, never played it. We could have had so much Yakuza bands. I've forgotten all about it now. Yeah, I, I, I know. I loved it at the time. You, Dave bought Zero. I own Zero and Kiwami. Have you played them? No. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> but, oh! Um, it's, it's installed, it's like just a, a, a button press away. No, no, what's going to happen? Starting you're going to get adventure. another code for another game you think you want to play, and then you'll be like, oh, my hard drive's full. What shall I delete? <laughs> and then off into the distance, Yakuza will go, and you'll never play it, and you'll continue to disappoint me. It is the most amazing mix of like weird, gratuitous violence with the most amazing stories. What is the general storyline for Yakuza 0? You are playing as, it's like one main protagonist, Kiryu Kazuma, and this is like a Yakuza with the heart, heart of gold. And for some reason, no matter how much he tries to leave that lifestyle behind, he always just keeps getting pulled back in and pulled back in. So it's just following him and the clan that he's in and him just trying to keep that clan on top and basically just moving. In and doing karaoke. In between doing karaoke and all the other sort of fun stuff. Like Yakuza Kiwami, do you remember Virtua Fighter? Virtua On, sorry. What? Mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> like all the old like Sega games are in the game. Oh yeah, in the arcade. So you yeah. can like go to the arcade and just play retro Sega games. Uh -huh. Like Taiko Drum Master's in one. That's good. You ever played that either of you? <laughs> Jesus. And I'm the one that gets the comments being like, she doesn't play any other games. And you're all there like, I've never played that, never played that. You've played them all in Yakuza. <laughs> and a little bit outside of Yakuza too, a little bit, a little bit. But yeah, everyone, if you're looking at like classic PlayStation like franchises, if you just pick up Yakuza Zero and love it, it's like a gateway Is to that like- the one you should start with? Zero, start with Zero. It's a prequel to the whole thing, even if you jump, because they like stories. So it is one continuous arc. It's not like Final Fantasy where like 
three has got nothing to do with seven. Right. This is, they're all linked. But if you want to just start skipping numbers, at least, at least start with zero. And that'll give you all the background information to probably the two biggest and most popular characters. Right then, listen up. There's only one right answer to this. What's going on? This is getting serious. There's only one correct answer to this. If people come to me and say, Dan, I've got a PS4, what game should I play? Yeah. And that's happened once, maybe. It was earlier. <laughs> it wasn't earlier today. <laughs> yes, it was this morning, actually. My answer would be Uncharted 4. I mean, it's of hard course, to it's argue. Uncharted 4. Hard to argue. With if that. you had to pick this, I would probably pick this. Then it's the poster boy. What an amazing game! Yeah, it's amazing to look at. It's amazing to play. The story's incredible, and I feel qualified to talk about it. Not because I finished it, but because I'm playing it at the moment. <gasps> I'm in the zone with oh, this game. Right. right? Back in. I'm up to I don't know chapter seven, maybe. Yeah. I don't know where that is. Wait, I don't is know how far into the game it is. Yes, it is the first time I played it. My God. Yeah. Better late than never. My, uh, my sort of... so much to come, Will. I know. I don't even know if I've seen the best of it yet. I assume I have, but maybe I haven't. Oh, I don't think you have. The best is yet to come. Not. There's so much. Oh my God, not. what an adventure it is. My, uh, my yardstick for how sort of enticing this game is, is my girlfriend, who cares very little for games, mm. wouldn't bat an eyelid at them. I was, I was playing uh, one of the earlier levels when you go back to his house and you're in his loft. Yeah. And she walked That's into the front room and she said, what are you watching? Aha! Not, what are you playing? Nice! And uh, so I explained to her it was Uncharted and she's been in ever since. Really? She now wants to join me, she's following the story. Wow. I think wow. it's something about, I mean the cutscenes are incredible. Yeah. The game looks great all the time. Water, water Rob, you, uh, you appreciate the water, don't you? Indeed. I, I say it's my number one favourite water in a game in Uncharted 4. But you're sometimes you're watching the cutscenes and they'll just be like a little eyebrow twitch or a little glance with the eyes and you'll just like come out the other side of the uncanny valley yeah. and you just think actually that was realistic i, I mean, believed it for a split second why don't we just throw in the big cliche bomb and say it's like a movie that you play it almost is like a movie that you play it's yeah. such an amazing adventure you start off with uh like the under the underwater scuba diving bit mm. and you think oh, i'm just gonna this is like a t tutorial then we're gonna go on an adventure but instead you come back to the house yeah. and he's like a family man now and he's got Elena living with him and you go up to the loft and it really cleverly puts in like the first three games mm. in the loft but as memories and as someone who has sort of grown up with the Uncharted games and you know, had a break of like five years with that one yeah. and now is a slightly older person to walk through that loft is like walking through your own loft. I must admit, I found it unexpectedly nostalgic. Yeah, absolutely. It was emotional. It was yeah. emotional, for exactly it, what you said. It was like, really good at replacing that feeling of, you know, I've been to my parents' loft and gone up in it and looked around and there's mm. been some old toys I used to have up there. And you do sort of pick them up for a minute and look at them and go, I remember this very fondly and clearly. Yeah. And it's exactly the same going through Drake's trinkets that he's got from his adventures. Yeah. Please finish the game. It makes you. <laughs> I will. <laughs> I will finish to, like, the game. Do a little pretend fight in that loft as well. You oh, have yeah, uh, you have the time. gun yeah, with like yeah, a ball yeah. in it, and, and uh, you shoot the targets. Yeah. yeah. There's so a trophy you're... for that, I think, isn't there? Is there? Yeah, yeah there, there is. There's a trophy for it. So you're on chapter seven, Dan. What what's happening? I don't know seven. if it's chapter seven. I've just revealed the map of Madagascar. So I think I'm about to go there. You haven't even gone to Madagascar yet. No. So you've done Scotland, right? Yes. Oh, I think Scotland's, Scotland's so amazing. Good. So I think you're actually, you've just done chapter 10 or 11. Okay. There's so many great environments. It's like, you're on the speedboat going through just... Oh, crystal, holy sh... Oh, just the crystal blue oh, I am aware oh, of the speedboat. I've seen like so the trailers so and stuff. Those right. screenshots are yeah. just yeah. Except, I mean, I'm a bit behind the times. Rob ruined it with his Friday feature. Bits have been spoiled. But, uh, but I don't really know where I'm going to go next, how much longer the game is left. How the story's going to progress. I, mean, I extended the gameplay on that game probably by double thanks to photo mode. Photo it's one of the first game. games to like yeah, just photo have mode photo as well. mode as well. Standard and yeah. it was just so good. If anything, I've got a rule now: you can't photo mode on your first playthrough yeah. because otherwise yeah. you just keep breaking up the action with like just to see if I can get the angle right as he falls to his death. That's so good. Yeah, I want to go and play it right now. Oh, it's a tough one. This isn't it. It's a tough one. I get asked this a lot. I think. We've all been asked this a lot, isn't it? Like, what, ooh, what game, what game, you can only play one game or whatever, what game do you have to play? I've just got PS4, what game do you have to play? It's really, really tough. I'm gonna add some caveats to my choice. Oh, wow. First of all, you know, other people in the group have picked other games. <laughs> uh, I had to pick this one, I had to pick Number two, 
uh, The Last of Us is remastered. So I'm going to assume you PS4 owner who hasn't, you PS4 owner who's who needs to play a game, maybe you played The Last of Us on PS3 because you really should play it on either console or both. But my my game is Bloodborne, um, which I've talked about on here lots, and it's just <laughs> so good. It's so good, and it, I think why I particularly love it is that it took me completely by surprise. As a game, I thought a I'd be really bad at, b I'd be quite scared of, C, I would find very frustrating, and D, just look at the A, B and C, would stop playing very soon, basically, and I found it to be none of those things. Uh, not that I was good at it, but I was good enough to finish the game, and finishing a game for me is like a huge achievement, <laughs> especially a game like Bloodborne that's kind of, you know, long, I guess, it's not, it's not, it's not huge, but it's like... It's an undertaking for a man like me who has a massive pile of shame and can't play Yakuza 0 even though it's installed on my PlayStation. Um, you played Bloodborne. I played Bloodborne and I finished it, uh, which I'm very, very proud of. But um, I think another reason I was thinking about this as being the game you should play is because it's not just... It's a game that you could play many times and it's a game with like a huge community, like a whole internet's worth of like theories and lore and stuff to delve into like it's one of those really really clever games when on the surface you can just play it and not really understand too much or wonder too much if that's what you want to do if you want to just you know kill stuff and figure out the skill of fighting and uh, how to use your items and all that stuff you can just totally do that but if you want to like properly dive in and go what is happening in this nightmare town why is everybody like screaming at me and what's what are those things that are hidden in the city and uh, I mean I maybe shouldn't have mentioned them but you can do that too and there's like it will just keep you going forever it will maybe drive you insane with the wondering about the theories and stuff which would be incredibly meta because it's a game not in part about insanity um so spoiling all of the things <laughs> i don't think this game I know nothing about it wouldn't take long to figure out it was kind of insane in some in some to some degree there are you know there are uh there are bosses that you don't even need to fight there are there are multiple endings to the game there are multiple kind of like little secrets and things to discover. I just think it's um, an incredible game. Like I said, it took me by surprise. And I want it to take everyone by surprise. If like me, maybe you've never played a Dark Souls game and you think that they're just not for you, I implore you to give this one a go because it's just different to what I expected. And it's not too scary, I got through it's it. It's really hard doing it, Dave. It, I don't honest. know if it is that hard, oh, Rob. It's one of those, no, no, no. one of the people on the YouTube comments, like, get good. No, not I at all. Did it first time. I don't think I did do it first time. No, I didn't do any of it first time. I don't think that I'm good. I just think that you don't need to be good, you just need to have the right attitude, Rob. I don't. A can do no. attitude. Do you know why I stopped playing Bloodborne? Was it because you couldn't get past one of the bosses? No. First werewolf. Weirdly, <laughs> yeah. because I was getting scared of my own success in the game. Like, oh my god! <laughs> that's like self like, Oh, it's, who's in the comments going get good, Rob? I was too good at this game. I actually scared myself. Well, I, mean, I, I had to stop you playing. The game of being too cocky. Well, yeah. yeah, that's right. Half-Life Two. Half Life Two knows that it's good, and that's why I hate it. <laughs> And I, I was so good at Bloodborne, I had to stop for the safety of the world in case I be, I was so good Why well, mean it. that I got phoned up by Sony and said, hey, stop playing that game. You're too good. <laughs> Miyazaki's, like, Miyazaki's stop, crying. Stop he's, <laughs> he's never seen anything like it. Don't know where to go from there. Plus, play Bloodborne. It's really, really good. Or play enough of it <laughs> where you're just really happy with how it's going and then just leave it there. Maybe that's my excuse for every game I've stopped playing and I haven't realised. Okay, so a game that every... PS4 owner should play is, um, and this is assuming you've also played the other two games in the series, three, in fact, is uh, Batman Arkham Knight. Oh yeah. Which is... Well, you should play it even if you haven't played the other two. Yes, you can do that, but it's good to play all of them. In fact, I think, you know, the first two Arkham games are available on PS4 as well now in their little package. Oh, that's true. Which is uh, the Return to Arkham series. Yeah. Which is great. But Arkham Knight is even now, however many years after it came out, it's one of the most absurdly good-looking games to ever exist, I think. Yeah. Um, 
Gotham City doesn't really have a day-night cycle. It's sort of perpetually at night, and it's perpetually raining. But that it just looks amazing. It looks just ridiculously good. You know when a, a game trailer comes out and it's sort of the beginning of a console generation, in this case it was PS4, and the trailers came out and you're like, yeah, it's never going to look that good, really. And then you play it and it just does. Yeah. It just looks ridiculous. Yeah. Just swooping off the top of a building and gliding through Gotham and all the lights shining through the rain and it's Cave so physics densely packed and oh, it's wonderful. Um, but the thing I like most about Batman Arkham Knight is it's the most relentlessly on game. And by that I mean there's not a single second of it, there's not a single frame where the game is not the absolute best game it can be. Like Batman is always so Batman. Yeah. Everything he does is the most Batman thing ever. He doesn't walk, you know, in a boring way. He walks like Batman would walk. At least with everything you do in that game, it's like, oh my god, look how amazing it is. Yeah. Just standing still, Batman. Yeah. Like his cape is swirling, the rain is on his cape, his face is all moody, the light is incredible. Walking along anywhere, Batman. Gliding is amazing, swooping, it's just incredibly dramatic at all times. And it's so just brilliantly and perfectly crafted to make you feel like you are Batman. No matter where you are in this massive open world city, if you call the Batmobile, it will show up brilliantly. Yeah. It won't clip through any scenery. No. It will just swerve around a corner, it will screech to a halt. Batman if he's coming down, we'll just dive into oh, it. Oh, better than Roach then. And, <laughs> oh yeah. yeah like, Roach is stuck on something. Batmobile doesn't get stuck behind fences. <laughs> Batmobile just smashes through the fences. Yeah. I mean, and just the way Batman can't just, you know, <laughs> yeah. get in the car, <sighs> just fiddle about with his keys for a bit, tune his radio. No, Batman gets in the car, he like slams into the pavement. Batmobile comes screeching around the corner, he flips into it lands and then there's no breaking gameplay you are just driving the batmobile yeah you're going from diving down onto the street to diving the batmobile the combat is so responsive um and then it will give you the prompt for the dual takedown and no matter where robin or whoever nightwing. it is who's fighting with you nightwing whichever character is fighting alongside you catwoman at, at times yeah. as well the game somehow brings those two characters together it and they contextually take down, take down an enemy at the same time and then control switches to the other one and you are fighting as the other person until the next dual takedown when it switches back to the other one and it's like it kicks the ass of, of in terms of the action uh, the brilliance of how it looks I think it betters anything that's even in like Nolan's Batman trilogy yeah. just in terms of action set pieces in terms of that oh yeah I really feel like I'm Batman and it's very effective that game at translating what are just very simple button inputs on a controller into something spectacular on the screen. Yeah. With minimal effort. I mean, you do have to be quite skilled to you know, pull off all the, the quite good combo moves you unlock later on, but you can pick up that game and look incredibly cool very easily. If you've not played any of the Batman <laughs> games, then flip an egg and play them because they are the most incredible um, wish fulfillment superhero games you can play. Superb. Uh, Rob, I need your full attention, please. Mm -hmm, you have it. <laughs> this is it. Just not with my eyes. <laughs> no, get it. your eyes. God, you want it all, don't you, Dave? Anyway, let us know in the comments what games you think every PS4 owner needs on their shelf. Give us a like if you enjoyed the video, and hit that notification bell to stay up to date with everything from the world of PlayStation. For the players.